shepherd that lies upon the road. The breeze is ruffling its feathers as if his spirit would be free, enchanting me like the wind in spring, like the wind in spring on a crow's wing. For the few, it seems to say no sure direction, only the road to liberty. Enchanting me like the wind in spring, like the wind in spring on a crow's wing. I thought the rich would take it all. I never dreamed I'd see a falcon above the mills and factories. What are those hills that rise so bare? Their barrenness is about making. For what we leave is everything. We set it free like the wind in spring, like the wind in spring. On a crow's wing. I thought the sky was bountiful. I never dreamed I'd see a falcon above the mills and factories. There is no shelter from the breeze. That breeze Ruffling of feathers, the great wilding of our dreams, enchanting me like the wind in spring, like the wind in spring on a crow's wing, enchanting me like the wind in spring, like the wind in spring on a crow's wing, like the wind. Well, that was Crow's Wing. Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here to watch us. Um, we are Nancy Kerr and James Fagan, and we thought we'd do a kind of informal meet the artist kind of thing for you. And what we even did was that we um, asked a few of our friends and supporters and fans on social media to sort of send us some general kind of queries and questions so they felt a bit more like we were responding to things instead of just playing in our garden, which is also fine. It is nice to be in our garden, but we'd obviously rather be with you all at Sidmouth Folk Festival. Um, but in you know, the absence of that this year, we thought we'd be able to do this with you. Normally these Meet the Artist sessions happen at about 7am, as you know, in the morning. <laughs> uh, After you've just got off stage at 3am. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we've, we've left it a little bit later today, so we were, we're, we're calm. Fresh. We're, we're calm much and fresher. fresh. We miss festivals so much we put up a tent in our garden. Um, so it's, yeah, it's the Costa del Sheffield. We and started with a song that Nancy wrote for her last record, which is called Instar, her last solo album. And uh, one of the questions, a couple of the questions we received were about Nancy's songwriting and her, how she goes about writing songs and how it's changed over the years. So maybe you could talk about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so that was lovely. Someone, a couple of people said um, they'd like to know just a little bit about the songwriting that I do. Um, so I write the songs that we, the kind of newer songs that we play in our duo. Um, and uh, yeah, as James says, that's Crow's Wing, which is from an album called Instar, which is all about nature. And someone asked me about sort of how you craft those songs and why you would use things like metaphors and stuff. And one of the big things for me is writing about nature. And it struck me when I was singing that song that I wrote it about. Um, I'd just written a, a, I'd just read a book um, about rewilding. And I wanted to write a load of songs about that kind of idea of humans stepping back for a bit and allowing nature to kind of take over. And it occurred to me while I was singing it that it's open enough, um, as lots of good folk songs are, its metaphors and its meaning are universal enough to kind of still apply in completely different times. And I think that's one of the things that we're looking for in our songs now, is songs that fit these new times, um, but will fit the times as they change. How would you say your songwriting's changed since we started working together? You, you, the first songs I remember you bringing to the duo were around about the time of 
steely water, but um, when you wrote Canon, um, but you also maybe more so on Between the Dark and Light when you when you put on a couple of songs, Songbirds and Tiburon. Mm. Do you remember what it was like writing then compared to how it is now? Oh, yeah, I think it was, it was definitely harder then. And I've been really lucky because I've learned to write because people have asked me to write. So I think that thing of getting a commission, for example, like from um, Folk by the Oak have been big commissioners of material of mine. And that idea of someone asking you to write a song and there being a deadline for it or a suite of songs mm -hmm. makes you write. So it makes you get better, I think, at um, delivering something which is still quality, but you, you do it more fluidly. So those those songs, as James said, we do an album and there'd be one of my original songs on it. Um, and now it's much more likely to be a whole album of my original songs. Well, um Let's play some tunes. We've had a few questions about the bazooki. And, uh... Uh, yeah, do you want to hear this question? Because this is yeah, a nice question. Yeah, read us the question. So when I um, ask people to talk a little bit about what they'd like us to talk about, um, Mike said a lovely thing, and he said that... Um, one of his highlights, James, was when you played, um, you were gigging with Cara Dillon at Folk by the Oak, which I just mentioned. Um, and um, I think it was a big kind of guests do, wasn't Andy it? Andy Irvin was Andy our guest Irvin in the was a, was a guest and um, you guested with him as well. So you played the blacksmith and uh, Mike describes that as being a, a big highlight. He says, you played the whole thing note perfect. What was that like? And I thought it might be just nice to show how much... Um, of our kind of musical lives, but especially yours, players like Andy and um, those kind of real innovators of Irish music have been. Well, if you'd told me when I was a teenager that I'd end up on stage with Andy Irvin playing the blacksmith, I would have been extremely surprised. Um, but he is an inspirational man to me. And uh, I, I know that song in my bones, um, my DNA. So it was a lovely opportunity uh, to, to get to do that. And in fact, this bazooki that I play, if you've seen me playing before you'll know that I play an instrument co-designed by Andy Irvin and Stefan Sobel. It's a, um, a guitar shaped bazooki so it's based on an Irish bazooki tuning which is G D A D, G on the bass D A D and it's got eight strings. Based on the Greek bazooki originally uh, Eastern European music came into Ireland really through the likes of Johnny Moynihan, Andy Irvin, uh, some of those key players in the 60s who were exploring the Balkans. Anyway, that, this is the bazooki, and we'll play you a couple of tunes now Let's which go way back in Nancy and I's life. In fact, I wrote the first tune in this set um, a few weeks after meeting Nancy in 1995 in Whitby, and uh, Nancy and Eliza Carthy asked me to join the Kings of Calicut with Saul Rose and Dan Plews, and we went. I went from arriving on the shores at the age of 23 to being in that band a few weeks later and on tour. It was quite an, a stunning thing and it changed the course of my life dramatically. And uh, I wrote this tune in the ladies' toilet <laughs> at uh, Leon C Folk Club in Essex. And uh, it's called The Wrong Door. So I'll play that for you. It's a, a typical bazooki tune, I think. And then we'll go into a fantastic piece of music uh, called The Choice Wife, it, um, which is a 9-8 a or a slip jig, which Nancy and I also uh, go, goes way back in our life together. It was one of the pieces we really bonded over, and it was um, the recording by Liam O'Flynn that really got us going on his album, The Given Note. So we'll play these for you. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, Thanks very much. Back. Yeah, lovely. I want to say that um, James wrote that first tune, as he said, in Leon C at the folk club there, one of many really great folk clubs. And we're always saying we miss festivals, and we do, um, but we miss folk clubs as well. And we also miss sessions when, uh, when we're playing that Irish tune. Um, and it's really interesting since lockdown how um, quite a lot of the things that we've played have not been our kind of polished known mm -hmm. set we've gone back to playing the things we used to play kind of socially yep. and that meant a lot of Irish music for us and also just to go back to the Andy thing um, we did tour with him didn't we we, we toured did, um, around Ireland with, with Andy and played some fantastic, fantastic times. music so. I hope we get back to it one of yep. these days so. so we hope you're all okay out there and uh, enjoying this um, set of videos for Sidmouth um, uh, it's it's lovely to be able to offer something to the festival, and uh, it was it was worrying times when they realised that they had to uh, to postpone this year. But uh, thanks to your support and all of you out there who've um, who've dug deep, not just for Sidmouth but for festivals and artists around the country, we're all enormously grateful. Um, let's look at a few more of those yeah. questions then. Do you want to talk about how? Um, uh the Australian thing, maybe. Would that the be a nice thing, thing to talk about? Which Australian thing? So someone said, I think this is a great question or um, kind of opening idea, which is um, how we have had an influence of Australian and British migration and immigration, both in our lives, but also in the kind of music that we have um, listened to and then how we've absorbed that and made that into our own. Well, hugely, things. hugely important and a, a great question. Thank you. Um, Nancy born in London and but moved around the country a lot as a child. My dad was born in Birmingham but his parents took him over to Australia when he was 10 in the late 1950s and my mum is from Tasmania and is descended from a variety of different people in Tasmania including uh, seven or eight convicts back in the 1830s and 1840s and uh, as Nancy and I have looked for songs over the years we were attracted naturally to songs of migration and that has been the story of our life really. In fact lockdown has been the first time Nancy and I haven't travelled extensively um, you know for, for four months. I don't remember the last time we stayed still for a week let alone <laughs> four months so it's been really interesting reflecting on um, how much our ancestors migrated and moved either voluntarily or involuntarily <laughs> But um, and it is in, it is uh, ref reflected in our repertoire definitely and in our our music. Um, so um, someone else also asked us about the influence of writers like Henry Lawson. So I think um, there's definitely a, a kind of canon. There's a tradition of writing in a if not a folk style, then certainly a kind of very. Um, what would you say, really kind of structured, really archetypal, really classic style mm -hmm. um, about um, migration narratives, you know, and they, they're very singable and they're very recognisable. They're, again, they're one of those universals. We all can, I think, identify with that idea of being far from home or trying to make it in a new home. Yeah. So we, and that's been quite interesting lately because people have been asking for those stories to be a bit, the word is decolonised, so mm. not just to be about this kind of very European um, kind of glossy um, look at empire, but also to look at who loses out from those narratives and again i think sometimes folk is well folk at its best should be doing that shouldn't it, it should Absolutely. be doing the voice of the, the the underdog and the um the kind of m marginalized people well i don't so. think any writer did that better for me than alistair hewlett yeah. who um performed at sidmouth a few times in his uh life uh he died about 10 years ago sadly but he left a a huge number of fantastic songs. One of Nancy and my favourite writers of all time. He was born in Glasgow, uh, spent a lot of his early life in Australia, right up and, until his uh, his thirties. And he he came back to um, to Glasgow and spent the last couple of decades of his life in the UK. You might have seen him with Dave Swarbrick, um, who was a huge fan of Alistair, and, and approached him in Australia years ago and asked him if he could work with Alistair. That was the calibre of Alistair's uh, attraction as a musician. A very charismatic singer, but a great writer. And I'll sing you a song called uh, The Swaggies of All Waltzed Matilda Away, which uh, reflects a lot of what Nancy was just saying about um, decolonising, if you like, the folk narrative. Uh, or to put it in a simpler way, um, this song is... is the underside or the underbelly of the colonial of the convict story really um seen from another perspective i think it's a brilliant piece of writing it's a perspective so where no one no one wins that's the thing and so yeah. if you're descended from people who 
had a hard time. This song is all about looking across the fence and going, they're having an even worse time. And so you should be able to kind of yep. identify with that. It's a great song. One, two, three, two, three. You came to this country in fetters and chains, outlaws and rebels with numbers for names, and on the triangle, beaten and maimed. Blood stained the soil of Australia. Dickies and duchesses, flashlights and whores. You worked their plantations, polished their floors, lived in their shadows and died in their wars. Blood stained the soil of Australia. Does it quicken your heartbeat to see time and concrete cover the tracks of the old bullet drains? Have you found so heartless to christen it progress when the swaggies of all the walls and tiller away? Driven like dogs from your own native home Hardship and poverty caused you to roam Over the bracken and over the foam Blood stained the soil of Australia Then in the fever for fortune and fame You caused the poor blacks to suffer the same Imprisoned on missions or hunted the game Blood stained the soil of Australia Black velvet band, and still to this day, well, we don't understand. Blood stain the soil of Australia. Curry and white, old Australian and new. Brothers and sisters of every hue. Well, the future is ours. Take the wealth from the few and raise the red flag in Australia. Let it quicken your heart beat. The road is your own. Travel it lightly and travel it well And don't speak of success or christen it progress Till the swaggies can all lost the tiller as well And don't speak of success or christen it progress Till the swaggies can all lost the tiller as well Like I've missed singing Radicalism that. in the garden. Radicalism in the, in the garden. Well, we might have a little change of scene. Uh, there have been a few people asked if they could have a look around the garden, and we'll take a short wander around the garden in a minute, and maybe reset our little uh, stage and see Keep where we're music. at, and then play a few more tunes. Most of these, well, all of these terraces were already here uh, when we bought the house. We didn't know what the garden looked like because it was completely overgrown. It had been a rental and uh, the garden was a jungle and when we cut it back with the help of some musicians who shall remain nameless but should not have been using the power tools that they were using <laughs> due to their prowess as guitarists um, we found we found this lovely garden um, so Nancy you this garden's been a, a, a solace for you during lockdown but it's been an inspiration for you for years hasn't it yeah i've always written lots of songs in the garden because i we lived on a narrowboat for years and years and never had a garden so i never really expected to have one at all let alone to have this 
quite i think it's i could not love this garden more if it was you know chatsworth house <laughs> it's, well, it's not a don't. huge garden but it's, it's a long big. garden isn't it yeah, do you want to just spacing. walk us up well, the... do you want to see the frog pond first oh of all? the frog pond tell us about that so this has been my lockdown thing um, which is that i took the children's old baby bath and made it into a little water habitat it needs a little bit of a clean out which is easy to do because it's a baby bath um, Frog's not in today, but normally she's tucked just under those rocks and I expect she'll come back soon if we stop hanging around because it's quite a hot day so she'll come and... Are you a bit over attached up. to the frog? I have slightly over identified with the frog, yeah, she's my, she's my, my familiar, she's my demon I think. So, um, I've tried not to take offence at the number of people who've said that you're trying to kiss the frog and turn it into a prince. Uh, it's the other way around, I want to be turned into a frog. Right. Um, so let's take you through... What should we take you through? Oh, can I show them the olive tree? Yes, this is the latest addition to our little gar um, garden here. This is an olive tree from a friend of ours called Jeanette, who always is usually at Sidmouth with us. And uh, she gave us this olive tree in response to Nancy singing a month of Leon Rosselson songs in May, which some of you might have seen. It's all available on YouTube, Nancy Kerr Music. And uh, one of the songs that Leon wrote, of course, is about Palestine and the olive tree. And uh, so that is a, a, a memento of that incredible song and the time that we spent recording it. Uh, the, the water feature here is made by Nancy's uh, stepdad, David, who um, has used canal artwork to reflect the fact that Nancy and I lived on a narrowboat for 10 years, and we used to have roses and castles on our boat, so that water feature is we'll go later. a big part of that. What else, love? What have we got? Um, oh, got roses. Some broccoli. We've never grown broccoli, broccoli before. Broccoli that's nearly as big as me. These Height sunflowers wise. are as big as you, in They're fact. Much bigger than me. Look at those ones. The boys have been growing those. Nancy gave them some sunflower seeds and they've done incredibly well this year. They're going to be super, very tall. Uh, tomatoes along the back there. <laughs> uh, Nancy planted last year's Christmas tree. Um, I have told her that this could become enormous one day. And she said, not as big as the, gra the mighty Scots pine, which I planted in the back of the garden. <laughs> yeah, we'll. Deal. The kids can deal with them. <laughs> okay, walk us up the back then. Okay. Past the rosemary bush. Um, so this was really, this is a very long-standing rosemary bush that I've written quite a lot of songs about, actually, especially um, a song called, what's the one on the Melrose Christmas album? A Strange Time to Bloom, um, which is a, a song dedicated to Rosa Luxemburg. And um, this is the rosemary tree that inspired that song because it bloomed in the middle of January, which seemed a strange Could you sing us a verse of that? I can't remember it. How's it go? Sweet rosemary flowers, what a strange time for blooming. I thought her like a rosebud seen only in June. In course January with springtime a memory. What a strange time for levity. What a strange time to bloom. All about the bush. Um, it was a bit more of a rounded entity this bush and then one of the kids fell in it when they were playing cricket and then he smelled like a lamb dinner for ages he after. did more sunflowers oh nasturtiums an owl some beans some uh, lettuces which the slugs are really enjoying this year they're getting a good feed <laughs> it's important to feed your slug community but we have managed to grow broccoli i mean cauliflower this year which is cool uh past the capacious lemon verbena balm. bushes lemon balm, lemon balm. and uh, some more sunflowers i just can't believe how well they're doing this year and then we we built a little festival this year because um, we've really been missing festivals so this is called frog fest and the kids love it out here we've been um having a few little family gatherings and uh, the boys like to come out here and uh oh yorkshire rhubarb yorkshire rhubarb first year we're not allowed to harvest it, are we, this year? No, you need to let it let it base in. But I will say this is a triumph because I... So everything that we did in the garden this year was done with no, like, garden centre help or anything because we couldn't get out. We didn't get out. So everything was little things that I'd got before lockdown. And this was two really tiny, not very happy-looking little bits of rhubarb um, that I managed to bring back to life and rescue. Um, and they've, they're quite happy. They're doing the great. Rhubarb triangle. And then uh, what Nancy calls the non-finity pool, which <laughs> is um, come in handy. And then up onto what we call Jess's Terrace. Jess Arrowsmith and Richard Arrowsmith live three doors down and in fact found us this house. 
Uh, and when we um, moved in, Jess helped Nancy and I excavate this terrace on the back. And we didn't even know this was here because it was a jungle. So we like to sit up here and it's been quite an inspirational place over the years to just retreat and write. And uh, we did our very first couple of songs in lockdown from this terrace. You love it up here, don't this you? This is great. This is an amazing space. Yeah. Well, thank you for the little tour of your garden. Thank you. Maybe some more music. Maybe we'll relocate. So one of the questions that um, someone asked us on Twitter um, when we said we were doing this Meet the Artist um, was what it was like being um, kind of part of musical families, which is true of both me and James, um, in really, really similar, similar ways and similar settings, even though many thousands of miles apart. Um, and of course, like there's no point pretending it's not a massive treat and a privilege and it kind of affects everything we do we've always had this music um around us even if we weren't always playing the kind of music we play now or the songs um i think just having music around you um makes it feel comfortable and something you can play around with which is how you get new ideas and how you get better at stuff um so it is a massive treat and um we're hoping that it's a massive treat for our children too because that's how we're bringing them up and to sort of illustrate um a bit of our family music i wanted to share a song with you with our youngest um boy harry um, and he's done a little song accompaniment, a little um, harmony on this song that I didn't even know he knew. Um, so he's going to sing that with me now. And it's a Leon Rosselson song. Leon's my favourite writer. And I spent um, one of the first bits of lockdown doing a, a song a day project where I sang one of Leon Rosselson's songs every day. So this is by Leon Rosselson, me and Harry singing Why Does It Have To Be Me? Why does it have to be me? Why does it have to be me? Why can't they just let me be? Why can't they just let me be? Why do I have to do things I don't want to do? Why does it have to be me? Each morning I lie in my bed. Slippery dreams in my head. Slippery dreams in my I live in a fine fairy castle of stone. All on my own. No one to moan, then a voice shouts Get up! And it isn't a dream Hurry up your late for school and wash your face and brush your teeth and are your fingers clean? And it goes on and on till I'm ready to scream Why does it have to be me? Why does it have to be me? Why does it have to be me? Why can't they just let me be? Why can't they just let me be? Why do I have to do things I don't want to do? Why does it have to be me? Why do I have to eat green? Why do I have to eat cabbage and spinach and beans? Cabbage and spinach and I beans. don't mind potatoes, I'll, I'll even, even have meat, meat though I'd much rather eat. eat ice creams and sweets, they say. Greens are good for you. Maybe they're right, but, but sometimes I think that they do it for spite. And, and I've never seen them eating what they don't like, so why does it have to be me? Why does it have to be me? Why does it have to be me? Why can't they just let me be? Why can't they just let me be? Why do I have to do things I don't want to do? Why does it have to be me? Why can't I play my own Why games? Why can't I play my own games? Somebody always complains. Somebody always complains. Whenever I'm playing at monsters, monsters or bears, jumping off chairs, chairs Falling downstairs, it's... Don't be so noisy. Or... Go out and play. Or... Look at a book if you're gonna stay. But the problem, problem is, is, they always get in my way. So why, why does, does it have, have to be me? Why does, does it have to be me? Why can't they just let me be? Why do I have to do things I don't want to do? Why does it have to be me? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Harry. I'll take my biscuit now. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't bribery. Where's my biscuit?
So this is our um this is uh, our older boy Hamish. Hi Hamish. Hi. Uh you've got a nice jig you'd like to play us. What is it? Uh, I can't remember what we can't it's remember called. what it's called. Let's, Let's call it nice. Dad sat on the wheelbarrow. It's <laughs> we, did you learn it from Nicola Beasley? Me dad sat it's on the Nicholas wheelbarrow. Jig? Nicola's Let's jig. Just say it is one of Let's Nicholas just say it's one of the tunes I love. Okay. Can you remind me how it goes? It's Do you start tune. in and I'll join you, yeah? Okay. Lovely. Thanks. That was Broadside, which is another one of my songs, and it's one that I wrote um, for the Elizabethan session um, with Martin Simpson and John Smith kind of doing a, a guitar kind of riff, and then I wrote this quite traditional sort of sounding tune on top of it. That's on our live album. It is. And yeah, a couple of people asked about um, kind of lyrics and music and how I write, and that's um, a good example of one where there was definitely a kind of piece of sound, a kind of musical start to it, and then I, um, I added this story or these words about um, 
Grace O'Malley, who is an Irish pirate queen. And I'd like to dedicate that song to the She Shanties, who asked us if we would um, show parts of our garden <laughs> in our Meet the Artist. So thank you. Well, thank you, everybody. And thanks to Sidmouth for inviting us to do this Meet the Artist session. It's been a, a pleasure to do and to show you a little bit of our lockdown life and our garden. And thank you to Hamish and Harry for their good sportsmanship as well by being involved, even if it was for biscuits. <laughs> um, Speaking of biscuits, uh, you can <laughs> contribute directly to the Hamish and Harry Biscuit Fund uh, if you want to by buying our live CD, which is on our website, which is kerfagan.uk, and we have waived postage for the entirety of lockdown. Uh, so coming to you at a bargain price, if you'd like to help us out, that would be the best way to do it, and we'll send that out to you as soon as we can. Um, this is a, a song that we associate with Sidmouth for us uh, because we performed it um, with the man we learnt it from, uh, Nick Jones, at the Nick Jones Return to the Stage concert um, some years ago mm. now, uh, after decades of him not performing. It was a thrilling event, one of our fondest memories of the great Sidmouth Folk Festival. Here's Farewell to the Gold by Paul Metzer. Sing along wherever you are, sing it loud, and we'll see you again somewhere on the road, I hope. One, two, three, two, two, three. <laughs> Oh, um. 
we cried off the day after day, making hardly enough to get by. When a terrible flood swept poor Jimmy away during six stormy days in Somewhere about For it's only when dreaming That I see it gleaming Down in the dark deep. For it's only 